running and getting into zone two cardio, which is when you can just about get your words out without being too gassed out. That can stimulate a process in your brain known as neurogenesis. Now, neurogenesis is the restoration of your brain cells and it can slow down neurological aging, which is when you slow down mentally as you get older, as well as preventing neurological illnesses like Parkinson's or Alzheimer's. Damn, all this running though. It's a shame I can't get it in a pill. Or can I? Well, lion's mane mushrooms can, as they contain neuroprotective effects, which means it can protect neurons in the brain, as well as regenerating nerve cells and creating brain growth factors, such as brain-derived neurotropic factor, which can be used to stimulate and create new neurons in the brain, which is neurogenesis. This can improve learning ability and memory. It can also prevent and treat neurological illnesses like Parkinson's or Alzheimer's disease. But neurogenesis isn't exclusive to lion's mane, no, it's also seen in cordyceps and reishi. Cordyceps? Isn't that that zombie fungus from The Last of Us? <laughs> it is, but hear me out. Cordyceps actually doesn't turn you into a zombie, as the TV show or game shows. In fact, it actually has medicinal value, as it can stimulate neurogenesis in the brain. It can do this by reducing stress, oxidative stress, inflammation and brain cell death, which can support the growth and survival of new neurons in the brain. In Chinese medicine, cordyceps fungus is seen as yin nourishing and yang invigorating. Yin nourishing means the boosting of a weakened immune system, and yang invigorating means the enhancement of general and cellular bodily functions. But what does this mean in the terms of science? Cordyceps mushrooms can be seen to enhance general and cellular bodily functions in many ways, one of which is to stimulate the act of vasodilation, which is the opening of your blood vessels, providing more blood, therefore oxygen, round to your brain and your muscles. Vasodilation is seen naturally in the body when we get too hot. This is because it brings your blood vessels closer to your skin, dumping more heat. This is really important for acts like sleep, as your core body and your brain temperature need to cool down by around 2 degrees Fahrenheit to actually get to sleep. This is why we like the cool side of the pillow, or sometimes stick our hands and feet out of the bed. It's because these acts cool us down and help us get to sleep. Now vasodilation is also really important for things like exercise, as it can indirectly give you more energy and prevent muscle failure. It can do this because it allows for the continuation of the production of ATP. Now ATP is essentially energy, and it's the reason why we call mitochondria the powerhouse of the cell. Now ATP production actually stops when you get too hot, so vasodilation, cooling the body down, allows the continuation of ATP. So cooling your body down during exercise is actually really important. Imagine you're at the gym, you're doing bench press and you just can't get that last rep. Now what that is, is your muscles getting too hot, and when they get too hot they can't produce ATP, which is energy, so you just can't get that last rep. So vasodilation through cordyceps and when you do exercise, cools your body down. You cool your body down, you can produce more ATP and actually do more exercise. Cordyceps mushrooms have also been seen to directly increase the body's production of ATP. This, in addition to the vasodilation during exercise, is the reason why Chinese medicine call it yang invigorating and is highly advertised in Western society to boost athletic performance. If you want to get any of the medicinal mushrooms we talk about today, head over to Bristol Fungorium, which is the first link in the description, and use the code GEORGE20 for 20% off your order. I've been taking medicinal mushrooms routinely for ages now, and as someone that goes to university and trains MMA, it's a game changer for both my athletic and academic life. Not only is Bristol Fungorium the best place to buy medicinal mushrooms, but it also helps me out a ton. So cheers guys. So with cordyceps mushrooms, we briefed over sleep, but how important is sleep? Now sleep is one of the three pillars of health. It is non-negotiable for a healthy lifestyle in every aspect of your life. Sleep scientist Matthew Walker says we're in a sleep loss epidemic. And there are multiple studies showing that getting less than six hours of sleep can increase your chances of getting chronic illness and stroke by 30%, cancer by over 40%, and it reduces your natural killer cells, the cells that fight viruses and cancer by over 70%. This in addition to a countless list of other issues you can cause in your day-to-day -day life. Sleep is not something you want to miss out on, and prioritising quality and quantity is essential. Now, there's many ways you can improve your quality of sleep through behavioural or supplementation tools, one of which is taking reishi mushrooms. 
Now, reishi mushrooms can improve your quality of sleep by supporting your natural stress response and promoting a healthy immune system. It can also help regulate your sleep-wake cycle, which is also known as your circadian rhythm, by interacting with neurotransmitters like serotonin, which is your happy hormone, makes you satisfied, optimistic and happy, as well as GABA, which produces a calming effect. Reishi mushrooms, like many other medicinal mushrooms, reduce inflammation, stress and oxidative stress, things that reduce the quality and duration of sleep necessary for a healthy life. If you're unaware of what oxidative stress is, it's a bit like the rusting of your cells. It might sound weird, but just as metal can rust when exposed to oxygen, your body cells can also get damaged when exposed to oxygen and other harmful molecules. This brings us to our next mushroom, the chaga mushroom. Now the chaga mushroom actually helps reduce oxidative stress in the body with its various polysaccharides and other compounds. Some of these polysaccharides actually stimulate the production of antioxidant enzymes in the body. It also contains melanin, which is also produced by the body to protect you from UV radiation, radiation from the sun rays, which cause DNA damage and oxidative stress. Now DNA damage can lead to all sorts of diseases, including cancer, so having chaga mushrooms indirectly prevents cancer. We've talked about cancer quite a bit today, but there's one mushroom in particular that can actually treat for cancer after diagnosis, and that is turkey tail mushrooms. This is some newly grown turkey tail mushrooms. You can tell because they're happy mushrooms because they have the white line around the ridge. They're quite colorful mushrooms, so it's quite hard to tell. But if you look right around the edge, they have the little whiteness glow there, which means they're happy mushrooms. They're growing nice and fast. However, if you look on this side, you can tell that they're not as happy. You can tell this by uh, the white line now gone. It's turning quite orangey. It's, it's gone quite gray. They're still turkey tail mushrooms nonetheless, and they're on the same log. But they're dying. They're, they've turned a darkish, nasty color, and the white line is now gone. So unfortunately, they're not growing as much, and they're actually dying. Now back to the healthy turkey tail mushrooms. Now turkey tail mushrooms contain a cocktail of compounds, but the one I focus today is the polysaccharide crestin. Now, Crestin increases those cancer-fighting natural killer cells, which stimulate the immune system, fighting viruses and cancer, and has anti-tumor effects. Now, it wouldn't be a mushroom video without talking about the main mycology man himself, Paul Stamets. And Paul's own mum actually got diagnosed with stage 4 cancer and being told she had less than 3 months to live. While taking turkey tail mushrooms alongside conventional cancer-fighting medicine, she went from having tumors and less than 3 months to live to being completely tumor free. Now this is a one case study and it's only one person. That's why we need a lot more research with a lot more people to prove these effects. Okay, I wanna emphasize that turkey tail mushrooms do not replace chemotherapy or radiation therapy or any type of conventional cancer fighting drugs. Now the study shows that it enhances, not replaces chemotherapy, radiation therapy, etc. Next, the mushroom you do not wanna mispronounce in front of your mum, Shiitake mushrooms. Shiitake mushrooms contain the polysaccharides beta-glucans, which we've already covered today, which can increase the macrophage count and the natural killer cells count. It also protects against oxidative stress and inflammation. It does this with the antioxidant ergothionine, which stays in your system for a long time, having a long effect than other antioxidants. <laughs> now the next mushroom is the mataki mushroom has a similar sounding name to the shiitake mushroom, that's because both their names originated from Japan. Now, mataki mushroom means dancing mushroom in Japanese, because people used to dance when they saw it. And shiitake mushroom means castanopis mushroom, because that's the name of the tree they're usually cultivated from. Now, mataki mushrooms boost cardiovascular health. They do this by reducing blood pressure and inflammation in the blood vessels. This is done by the polysaccharide building block, beta-glucans, which reduce the production of angiotensin II. This is a hormone that closes the blood vessels and increases blood pressure. Now, angiotensin II isn't bad for you. It's produced endogenously, which means you produce it inside yourself naturally. However, just like everything else, too much of it is bad for you, especially considering angiotensin II is released typically through stress, dehydration, or sodium depletion. So throughout history, mushrooms have always seemed to have benefits to humans, whether we used amadou mushrooms to transport fire thousands of years ago, 
Or maybe even recent history, World War II, we used penicillin to create antibiotics, saving tens of thousands of lives. Could it be obvious? Could it be something that was staring right at us? Could it be something that's right beneath our feet? Something that can boost our quality and quantity of life? We still need further research into this topic and to bridge the gap between the woo-woo mystical, trying to sell you dream catchers, trust me bro, it'll cure your cold, magic, and actual scientific evidence. We stand in a moment of time where we can see mycology traverse the boundaries of medicine once again. So as humans don't live long enough to see the trends in humanity, will we go full circle? Right, that is the basics of the basics for a few of the many medicinal mushrooms that are out there. But if you want to see my references, they're down below in the description. And if you want to hear more about this topic, a podcast episode with a mushroom expert and cultivator is coming out very soon. So keep updated. Thanks for watching.